And now for our weekly news segment. All right, hopefully screen show will work. Share screen. Share a window. You want to do with viewers on stage, get people up? Um, there's a decent amount of news. I'm going to run through it first because it might take a All while. Right, let's if we have let's do that. Up. Let's um, do that. So first, we got, of course, new updates for Cake Wallet. Small bug fixes. We'll have some more stuff. We'll have some big features coming out soon. Uh, but go and update for now. Uh, Monero.Vegas is back. Oh. So we might be able to try that uh, in a little bit. I'm going to go through the rest of the news yeah. first. But this just came back. Uh, I didn't know it dis- ago, Why so. did it leave? I didn't I even realize no it left. Okay. But apparently it's back now. Okay. So if you want to be able to gamble away with your Monero, then uh, <laughs> you can do so. <laughs> oh, yeah. So MoneroCon tickets are now Monero available. Con. VIP is already sold out, apparently. So you can still get day ticket, general admission. They have 172 available. And they've got some merchandise uh, available also. But yeah, Monero. Oh, wow. They, they sold out a VIP already. Really? Apparently, oh, I guess there's Check a waiting VIP. list to see if they're uh, going to add more. Oh wow! Yeah, That's so we have um, we have a special promo code. If you put in Monerotopia, the first fifty tickets get fifteen percent off. So go ahead and use that Monerotopia to get your. Oh yeah! See ticket. if I check out with that, you get fifteen percent off. Very nice. Nice. Very nice. Awesome. Yeah, we will. We'll, fingers crossed, we'll be there. Sweet. I'm planning to be there too, uh, as they're looking for more sponsors. And of course, Cake Wallet is one of the cypherpunk heroes. Awesome. So I, I will be there at MineroCon. Uh, and I think Vic will too. Uh, but it'll be great. They're looking for, for one more cypherpunk hero, which is like a, a big sponsor. They're looking for one more contributor and there's available six slots for a smaller supporter so they're looking for more sponsors right now so if that's something you're interested in then you can totally take that up and next we've got uh Man- magic monero fund uh funding for vt nerd monero and monero light vault server dev work for quarter one quarter two 2024 uh they're looking for a total of twenty eight thousand eight hundred us dollars raised and so far they've raised two thousand dollars or 13.2 xmr with 18 donations so this is the list of all the stuff that he will be doing and contributing to so if you want to support this you can go to the monerofund.org website of course these will all be in the description in the video afterwards in the news area so you'll be able to check that out yeah definitely uh show some love to vt nerd i mean he he's one of these guys that's uh just been been a part of Monero for for a very long time and contributing in a, in a major way. Uh, he's usually focused on kind of network security and network network level privacy related to aspects like Dandelion plus plus and all that stuff and uh, I two P um, things that are pretty important. Very very important <laughs> things, but I feel like the the aspects that maybe people don't right. We're always talking about. Uh, ring signatures and confidential tra- you know mm-hmm. we're, we're talking about those aspects of the protocol uh but just as important is the right the network level security and privacy so people you know don't even know you're, you're running and using monero um extremely important and that's what he's always focused on and always improving i mean he's it's tremendous tremendous we'll see the, light the walks ever get some done. love yeah. Yes, and he's he's also that makes uh, you happy. the main dev for that. Yes, definitely happy about that. And next, we've got a, an open merge request for Boog nine hundred to continue work on Cuprate. And Cuprate is a Rust implementation of the Monero node that has had some work done on already by some various people like Boog nine hundred and even Luke Parker in Hinto Chennai, the guy who created Goopax. So this is looking to be merged. I'm sorry. Whereas... What is Cup? What is this? This is uh... Cuprate is a Rust implementation of the Monero. Oh, app. right, right, right. Okay, yeah, we were talking about that a couple of weeks written, ago. Written, okay. like, as it says, written from the ground up in Rust. So mm-hmm. that's that's cool. Very cool. And Hinto Janai uh, just got his request merge a day ago uh, by Luigi. 
So he will, he's got an open CCS right now that you can contribute to for Hinto Janai, who's the guy who created Goopax, the, the mining program, to do mm. full time on cup rate for three months. So he would work alongside Boog if Boog got more funding also. Oh, big. amazing. There'd be, two, there'd be two main people working on cup rate. What's his name? The uh, guy? Uh, Hinto Jin. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Hinto, Hinto. Jinai. Jani? I wonder, I don't know I wonder if he's somebody who would uh, be down to do like a Monero talk or something. I think we tried to get him on once before. Did um, we? You'll have to see if you can contact him. Yeah, because I've never, I've never dealt with him. I don't think we could find any. Uh, I don't think he had any, like, contact. Hinto Janai, if if you're listening, <laughs> reach yeah, out to yeah. us. You can, Doug, you know, you, you don't keep keep your camera off. You can use a voice <laughs> disguiser or whatever if you want. Yeah, but you can contribute to that right now. It's in the funding require stage, and hopefully Boog will get his here soon. Uh, yeah, so Cuprate awesome. will be really cool. Yeah, and love what you, what you did with Goopax. Yeah, Goopax is really awesome. Uh, so we got this tweet from Cryptonator1337. Bitcoin worth more than $2 billion confiscated in Germany. They belong to the operators of the formerly leading movie streaming website, Movie2K.to. It's amazing. Crazy. I know that Germany's even more serious about the copyright thing than the US is in a lot of ways. They said to have distributed more than 880,000 pirated copies of films, oh no, via the portal from 2008 to 2013 and operated in a legal streaming service. <gasps> Unbelievable. They are said to have purchased Bitcoin with the proceeds. Talking about being in the right, right place at the right time, right? They were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing windfall. One of the suspects is in an investigation had voluntarily transferred the virtual currency to the federal criminal police office. No Ooh. charges have been brought up against the men. Interesting. No charges. So wait, wait, what exactly happened? So they, these guys made a shit ton of crypto. Sell it right Ill illegally, uh, selling copyrighted stuff right for Bitcoin back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they all their Bitcoin got seized, but they haven't been charged with anything. I guess the seizure was what they got, all their Bitcoin seized, and that's, that's what they get, yeah, but they haven't wow. been charged, which is also weird. The they state coming charges in. Not, so they, they just stole all their Bitcoin all their and they haven't been charged for anything. That's pretty crazy. Hmm. Well, if they use Monero. Yeah, but was this a potential uh, shum moment? Is this a potential should have used Monero? Yes, moment? but it, it 20, 2008 to 2013. <laughs> uh, I'll be this before Monero was a thing. So yeah. Maybe they are Unfortunately, using Monero. Uh, yeah, maybe now. Now, <laughs> now that could fly. But to be fair, we can't really throw that at them given the fact that it was... 2008 when they started doing this thing which is when even bitcoin was brand new because bitcoin came out in like 2007 2008 right yep yep yep, yep. bitcoin yeah right. 2009 um interesting all right moving on so there is this cool amazon service which is a little bit similar to anon.shop but it works differently called monizon and they've been uh going hard on twitter uh, they have a way that you can buy things on Amazon with Monero, which the way this one works is that you will make an Amazon wish list. This is the thing you can do on Amazon. I actually didn't know this. You can create a wish list that you can make public that other people can order well, the items for you, but they don't see your address. It just gets delivered straight to you on the address that you put privately mm -hmm. on the wish list. And so that's how this works. You put in your item. So if I actually go to Monazon. Dot, I want to make sure it's the correct website. Yeah, it is monazon.com. Monazon. So you order now, and you put in your wish list URL and the value of that item, and then you add it. And then you pay, I think, a small fee. And then you can also become an ex So how is that work? So uh, on Amazon, I make a wish list. I, I'm, then, I'm then forwarding that wish list to Monazon. And then somebody is going to pay that bill for me. How are they effectively making the payment? How is it getting paid 
to Amazon to the wish list. Because they're sure, buying so it works. with fiat on the Amazon side. You pay you pay Monazon. Right, right, right. You pay Monazon in Minera, and then they're logging. But okay, so but on they don't Amazon, log in with your account. They they have their no, own no. Amazon account. Right. And they're capable of oh, and they just they just go and order everything from your wish list. So that but they can only see the wish list. They can't see your address. That's correct. This is a feature I didn't know you, like Amazon had. But yeah, you can I didn't create really, a public wish list okay. with a specific now, address in it. Then when people mm -hmm. order stuff, it just goes to that address on that wish list. It's like you're ordering a gift for somebody, right, right, but right. you don't get your address. So does does Anon Shop do it differently? How do, how are they doing it? Yeah, so Anon Shop, uh, they do it. They do. Oh, what? I thought it was Anon.shop. Um, uh oh. Degun. Degun's been taken out. <laughs> the competition. Anon Shop? Nope, that's not it. What the fuck? Anon Shop.app. There it is. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get uh, Degun. Anon Shop.app. Back yeah, on. that would be yeah, good. He hasn't been on in a long time, and you know, mad respect. He started this. Uh, I don't know. This is a while ago now. Two years, like maybe a year. Um, he's been Actually, hacking away at this. Is still the old website. Um, historically, how uh, Anon Shop has worked, it uses the Amazon lockers, right? So they right. will order something to an Amazon locker that's near you, so you don't have to give them your address. No, but they also had the. They had a delivery We're... service also, a separate delivery service, like a forwarding service where they will order something on your behalf and then right. ship it to you after they get it. Right, right. But they knew your address. They, yeah. they, they weren't avoiding You have to give your address. address so they can ship it to you or a P.O. box, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so that's, yeah, the, that's the main difference there. Um, I think they're both cool. They're just the ways they work is different. I think the fees for Anon Shop is a little bit higher than Monazon. I think Monazon is cheaper. Uh, but obviously, Monazon only works with Amazon because it has to use that wish list thing. So, yeah, we could get, cool we could get we people doing that on, on XMR Bazaar too, right? Because it would just be a, people could just post their a link to their wish list and say, buy me stuff. Like that could be, a, right? A, a, an XMR Bazaar post potentially. Potentially, yeah. I could, that could, I could just could go be, on Amazon, make a, make a wish list, and then I could go on XMR Bazaar and be like looking to whatever for somebody to buy my wish list and just just post it right yeah i guess this is just the website yep hmm. well cool yeah so those are those are two oh, options cool. we got we had another one now it's always great to have have competition in that space uh we already looked at that that was monazon same stuff okay feather wallet now includes magic monero fund crowdfunding proposals directly on the home screen and you can donate without leaving the app Wow, that's pretty cool. So Feather Wallet now within itself has shows. See, look, there's the VT Nerd Monero and Monero Light Wallet Server Dev Work. So there if you have, is. and you use Feather Wallet, all you have to do is just open it and click on the crowdfunding tab, and right from there you can just give to that fund that proposal. Pretty great feature. Nice job, Feather Wallet. That's awesome. That's awesome. It would be cool if we had the general uh, Monero fund proposals in there too. That would that'd be cool. Um, Wait, so I which just, ones are in there? It's just... I guess it's just Magic Monero Fund. Oh, it's just the Magic funds. Monero Funds. Okay. Yep. Okay. Crypto mines will have to start reporting their energy use in the U.S. The U.S. Department of Energy will begin collecting data on crypto mines, electricity use, following criticism from environmental advocates over how energy-hungry these operators are. We will specifically focus on how the energy demand for cryptocurrency mining is evolving, identify geographic areas of high growth, and quantify the sources of electricity used to meet cryptocurrency mining demand. The administrator of the EIA said in a press release today. So more, more hampering on the mining stuff, which this is probably mostly for Bitcoin mining. Yeah, U.S. Bitcoin mining because Bitcoin mining does cost a lot of energy because of the ASICs you have to use. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. And Bitcoin mining this is, is this is not, insane. It is insane. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, we've been talking about this forever on this show, right? Um, this this is what we were going to see happen in Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin mining has become really decentral or very centralized, and so you've got these giant farms that mine Bitcoin because that's the only way. Like, average person can't afford to mine Bitcoin, so 
and it's it's an attack surface. It's allowing yep. the state to essentially co-op the mining network. So here's Which here's the, the first first versions. iteration of it. It's the state moving in saying, "All right, we're compiling a list of everybody that's a Bitcoin miner. All of you have to now be on this list. We know who you are, uh, and actually you have to report to us your energy usage." Uh, you know, next thing it's OFAC compliant transactions or, you know, whatever, whatever it is they want to implement. Right. But we're just the fact that the state can contact a large, significant, overwhelming portion of the Bitcoin mining network and ask them to do things is the problem. And here they are doing it overnight. I mean, the two largest centralized mining pools for Bitcoin are already KYC. So it's just furthering like, that that issue of having to you want to mine well you can't you've not allowed to just mine uh but to be fair this is like a big bitcoin issue with, with mining farms and how the protocol doesn't have anything against a6 so yeah that's that's kind of a mess um so yeah, and, and, it, and it's a boon for right it's for monero right it's been talking about random x this is why guys random this x. is why you, you'll never see a headline that you know the u.s government is uh asking all monero i mean they, they might ask but this is like there's nobody to send the letter to right there are there are <laughs> large monero my corporate Contact monero mining Pony. farms yeah He's the assumed owner of Monero for some people, <laughs> some public officials. They don't know if you're just using your computer for gaming or they don't know they don't know what you're doing. And of course, with Monero, there is like a much, 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 much smaller amount of hash rate currently happening compared to Bitcoin. So there is always that concern of, oh, if the government wanted to suddenly control large part of the hash rate, they could. But at the same time, Monero mining by default right now, as it stands, I... I believe is more decentralized in Bitcoin and everyone just has to start up, you know, their spare computers and start mining Monero. And if tens of hundreds of thousands of people do that, that considerably decentralizes the network versus Bitcoin. You've got to buy his $10,000 ASIC to make a mm -hmm. difference. So it is what it is, but this is actually a very interesting development. So I think we talked about this uh, last week. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll go ahead and read the tweet. In the last two days, all crypto news outlets have echoed information claiming that Finnish authorities have been able to trace Monero transactions in a ransomware case and arrest the person responsible. Knowing Monero's technology thoroughly, I was very surprised because today we know that it is impossible to trace these transactions. Okay, Monero isn't technically untraceable. It's highly plausibly deniable, but that's a different argument. And I found this article that explains that indeed the news is false. The hacker was arrested because when he uploaded the compressed file with all of the hacking data to the dark web, he mistakenly included the entire home directory of his computer. <laughs> and the investigators found information to identify him. Sorry to the Monero footers, but the network is still secure. So this is pretty crazy. So this guy, who is like a very young hacker, 17 years old, a 25-year-old, well, now he's 25, the 25-year-old Finnish man has been charged in extorting a once popular and now bankrupt online psychotherapy company and its patients. Finnish authorities rarely name suspects in an investigation, but they're willing to make an exception for Julius Zekil Kivimaki, probably pronounced that very incorrectly, a notorious hacker who, at the tender age of 17, had been convicted of more than 50,000 cybercrimes, including data breaches, payment fraud, operating botnets, and calling in bomb threats. Someone needs to give this man something to do. Uh, <laughs> in late October 2022, Kivamaki was charged and arrested in absentia, according to the Finns, with attempting to extort money from Vasatamo Psychotherapy Center. On October 21st, 2020, Vasatamo became the target of blackmail when a tormentor identified it as Ransom Man demanded a payment of 40 bitcoins in return for a promise not to publish highly sensitive therapy session notes Vasatamo had exposed online. So this goes on, uh, but eventually um, down here, you can see on October 23rd, 2022, Ransom Man uploaded <laughs> to the dark web a large compressed file that included all of the stolen Vestamo patient records. But investigators found the file also contained an entire copy of Ransom Man's home folder. A likely mistake that exposed Don't. a number of clues that they say point to Kim, Kim Fimaki. Ransom Man completely deleted the large file accompanied by, by Whoop's notation, but not before it had been downloaded a number of times. The entire archive has since been made into a searchable website on the dark web. 
Among those who grabbed the copy of the database was Antti Kuritu, a team lead at Nixu Corporation and a former criminal investigator. In 2013, Kuritu worked on an investigation involving Kivamaki's use of the Zbot botnet. Among other activities, Kivamaki engaged in as a member of hacking group Hack the Planet. So this ultimately what has nothing to do with Monero in that case. If this is is this that same case that was talked about last week of Finnish authorities mm -hmm. tracking Bitcoin with like EAE attack, right? Right. So basically, this has nothing to do with it. If I mean Krebs on security is very very uh, very highly respected security blog. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting, uh, and maybe maybe it was some kind of now the EAE attack is a real attack that could be done. Mm -hmm. um, are there any examples you know off the top of your head of an EAE attack that's been proven to happen in the wild before? Uh, no, we've only kind of heard suggestions of it. Right, there was that that um, slide going around from some presentation that was done in like Italy by some. <laughs> Uh, where they suggested that they 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 use this method, uh, but I don't think we know of any actual incidents where it was used. As That's far as I know, it's poss right? very possible. As like we know of the news, they just take something and they run with it. Somebody may have said, you know, hey, look, Monero, Monero is looks like a Monero's, you know, not as traceable. This guy got caught and he was using Monero. Well, okay, he's using Monero, but that's, of course, with every other case we've seen, that's not why he was caught. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> all right. Well, I think that's mostly it. So that was not a should have used Monero uh, example. That was a shouldn't have accidentally <laughs> send your <laughs> your personal files <laughs> with your uh, ransom request. Whoops. Imagine what he was feeling at that moment, because it looks like he, he realized he did it, because then he deleted it. He was like, oh, fuck. Oh, no, it's over. He's it's like, over. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, be careful out there, guys. <laughs> if, if this you're is gonna... what happens when young geniuses don't have anything better to do. <laughs> yeah. To uh, promote Monero development for young geniuses so they can occupy yeah. their minds to do something good. <laughs> Instead of hacking yeah, man. Uh, psychotherapy centers and blackmailing them, extorting them. <laughs> 17 years point. old. That's, yeah. 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 This guy could have been, you know, working on Monero. Could have been working with Luke Parker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on this crazy cryptography stuff, implementing Sarai. Hey, man, it takes all types. The world's a beautiful place. All right. Well, I think that's pretty much it for the news.